Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome to Knowledge Talks. A weekly entertainment and knowledge sharing program at live to specifically share with you topics that contribute knowledge to the society. Every week, Knowledge Talk hosts and invite guests that are experts, professional, leaders from the field locally that bring wealth of knowledge to you. Knowledge Talks also highlights and promotes talents in the country that contribute knowledge and success to the nation. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is a weekly session that I will have with you every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. I'm your host, Tariq Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Mohammed Ishabibi and DJ Saleh for an hour bringing you free knowledge at your doorsteps on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Now, let us take a quick break before we start our session today. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Hilal Al-Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Mohammed uh, Shabibi, with you here today live on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Yeah. Have you come across the term turnaround management? Yeah. A discipline or rather a growing specialized role that revives a company's health back to its winning feet during crisis and or even during an economic instability. Does your company need some fresh eye, knowledge and skills to review some, uh, some sports problems and create new solutions? Oh yes, today is your day because my guest is a management consultant guru with over 15 years of experience in various fields with a hat of a turnaround management skills. But the question is, who is he? <laughs> Baby Samuel Sam, also known as the Big Boss, is my guest today here at Knowledge Talks. <laughs> Sam is a turnaround consultant and a businessman with more than 15 years of experience. He is the organization mentor for a few startups in Oman and is also the vice president of Knowledge Oman, the award-winning volunteer organization. Over and above, he is a humanist with his passion being Little Hugs, a children's home he is planning on setting up in his homeland. Our topic for today, ladies and gentlemen, is about turnaround management. It is a topic that is increasingly relevant for present and future entrepreneurs and for all management executives. Sam has been instrumental in bringing about a turnaround for a few companies for which he acted as a consultant and a mentor as well. Now, he has agreed to share with us today his thoughts on the topic stemming from his personal experience. Sam, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum salam, Tariq. Doing pretty good. How are you? Great to have you on uh, Knowledge Talks today. It's uh, indeed Sam. my pleasure and honor to be here today with you, Tariq. Thank you very, very much. Uh, before we, 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 we start, uh, Sam, uh, I would like to go uh, through uh, uh, one of the passionate uh, project that you have in mind not sure if you started already but it's very very noble and which is the little hugs it's a children's home that you're planning on setting in your homeland I found this to be very very sweet I found this to be very very noble and and something that is is, is, is that brings great back to the society could you please tell us more about it great to ask about this particular Tariq because it's 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 always something which is really great to my heart okay Today's topic is turnaround management. Okay. And turnaround is my passion. Okay. But little hugs is my mission. Oh, that's very good. That's a very mission good. with a lot of passion, actually. To tell us what's your thoughts about it. I mean, I've seen about it. I read about it. But but w w tell us, tell us, uh, what what is it all about? The little hugs. Little hugs is a children's home, as you rightly said. But I would love to call it as heaven on earth. Oh, mashallah. Okay. When I say that, it's a children's home. Those children who have been abandoned by man or by fate, they will be given a place where they can live, 
okay. love life and spread love mashallah mashallah so that that's the aim that you intend uh, to do exactly okay and it is it is basically planned to be in in india okay and uh, we have already re- registered the trust acquired the land okay and uh, we have identified the builder who can build up eco friendly homes okay mashallah and the difference between any other children home and this is that it is going to be a self sustainable ecosystem when i say okay. self sustainable ecosystem mm-hmm. it doesn't actually take funding from external entities from individuals nothing at all okay. it sustains by itself so it could be called also a social enterprise but not a profitable social enterprise okay i know i i respect that uh, uh, fully uh, uh, sam i looked at the logo that you've created also um, um, on your on your your facebook account and different social media uh, platforms that you have okay. it is a beautiful logo Uh, okay. I like the way it describes what you're trying to do and I wish you all the very best inshallah. Thanks a lot Tariq. Uh, uh today's topic is about turnaround management. We are going to look at the scope, the consultancy, strategy around it and the necessary stages of this discipline. Uh to start however, I would like us you to please share with us the definition of turnaround management. What does this term really mean? Great. Um uh, turnaround management from an academic perspective if I have to define it it is a strategic and rapid implementation of a series of actions to correct a seriously unprofitable situation of an organization. When I say that I I think I would I would like to make it more simpler. It is converting a non-profitable entity to a profitable state of affairs. Oh that's very nice. Very nice. Exactly. So- and um uh, unfortunately turnaround strategy or turnaround management is mostly considered slightly negative when you say that people hear about turnaround management they say that all right these guys are mostly talking about cost cutting change of management those kind of negative impacts which is not right the whole mm-hmm. idea or the whole intention of having turnaround management is to ensure that the organization grow organically okay the holistic development of an organization which actually face some kind of a threat in terms of its existence Yeah. is where uh, a turnaround consultant or a turnaround manager yeah. works in okay. and does his job yeah. but it, it, it's not really necessary uh, a, a negative connotation to go into a company and change the management and we will go uh, through uh, 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 during our program today and discuss more about it uh, but i don't see it to be very much a, a, a negative connotation when it goes out to uh, cutting the costs if there are unnecessary costs in an organizations or even changing the management per se I know it's, it's not good and nobody wants to leave the job or, or per se but 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 it, it it's probably one of the thing that needs to be done to get a polluted or corrupted organization back to state what I do you think I pretty well agree with you I okay. pretty well agree with you okay it it is I don't say uh, these are vital elements of turnaround management but okay. not inevitable elements of a turnaround management okay so cost cutting or uh, making a lean team this could be vital elements okay but as i said like it they are not very inevitable factors of a turnaround turnaround the ultimate goal of a turnaround is to ensure that the organization is back into track okay yeah but again a uh, back track you mean being profitable absolutely okay yeah, yeah. but again uh, let me let me explain you this way we have been talking about profits non profits and stuff like that yeah. but turnaround management doesn't imply or confine itself only towards uh, a conventional business model mm. it also talks about it could be implied on an ngo okay a voluntary initi- initiative okay or even to a social enterprise for that matter okay 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 so but uh, in our real life i think it's always good that you know we don't get diluted on the topic and you know try to emphasize more on the conventional business model uh, which mm. is more of uh, useful for the listeners as well okay yeah. the three mm, things you just m- mentioned right now you said this practice can be done to a profitable organization to a non-profitable organization to an ngo and to a voluntary organization True. could you share uh, how these could be done within the three or four categories we just shared uh for conven- profit organization bringing it back to profits what about the others any kind of a turnaround you know uh, turnaround management is also very closely related to your uh, change management when we say about change management as i said uh, when i explained to you when i tried to define it the whole agenda of turnaround management is to ensure that an organization grow organically or the holistic development of an organization let's say an ngo is doing a, a particular particular you know job or you know particular activity to the society but at the same time it could have actually done far better with the current resources that it does have 
Mm-hmm. But uh, most of the time we don't actually realize what is the kind of potential within the team. So you just basic, basically get in, try to analyze what are the skill set, do a SWOT within the organization, and uh, assign responsibilities, and uh, take up new new assignments, new roles. I mean, and uh, take the organization to the next level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, is this a service for small or large uh, established organizations? It implies to even the smallest to the biggest. Okay. When I say that. Uh, even the biggest fail mm-hmm. if the economic history has taught us anything it is the biggest and the best has ever failed no business is stable tarik okay okay uh, let's look at the big boys for example you look at yahoo ibms ford uh, you look at chrysler toyota for that matter uh, mm-hmm. all these guys have failed at one given point of mm-hmm. cat caterpillar for that matter starbucks mm-hmm. for that matter mm-hmm. nissan the turn round leader of nissan carlos gosen mm-hmm. he was supposed to be one of the most sought out celebrities in japan at some given point of time during yeah. the early 2000s yeah so the big boys have failed mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that you know all of them have to inevitably fail at some given point of time mm-hmm. the point that i'm trying to say is that every business there is a possibility to fail okay, okay. but if you look at the wall street wall street darlings like your google you look at uh, procter and gamble for example or you look at um, Walmart for example they had a consistent growth process they started mm. small and they do have a consistent growth process mm. so i don't deny that but mm. uh, history has taught us that the biggest can for including apple okay apple was just you, you, i think you read my mind boss <laughs> now apple uh, is 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 one of the organizations that was uh, uh, did very very well at once and mm-hmm. then went into almost sure. bankruptcy when uh, their leader Steve Jobs was out and then Steve Jobs came back again and the company is almost back to its feet. I don't know what is happening now. Almost not as good as it used to. Uh, but would you call Steve Jobs uh, uh, activity during the time where he got the organization to where uh, it was back to its feet a turnaround a professional or a manager? Absolutely. He was one of the most sought out or most talked about turnaround manager the globe has ever seen to be a, you know mm-hmm. if i'm being a little exaggerative about it okay. uh, he was he's a legend of the era i would say you know uh, what a fantastic turnaround that we are talking about from 350 mm-hmm. projects he has cut down to 50 projects and 50 to 10 okay okay compared yeah. to his predecessors and yeah. and uh, this 10 projects mm-hmm. focused on this particular 10 projects and uh, the end result was one of the most finest gadgets and the user experience the world has or the history has ever produced okay yeah. so does this mean a turnaround manager can be someone internal and not just an external as a service uh, there is a challenge to it you know like when do we need a turnaround or rather most of the organization when do they go for a turnaround mm-hmm. when there is an existence threatening crisis happens to an organization is when uh, uh, when an organization looks in for a turnaround or a turnaround manager Now, um, two schools of thought to it, as you rightly said. One could be an internal manager who can walk in and do this job. Okay. Another one is avail the facility of a turnaround expert. Okay. Uh, I would always recommend an advocate for a turnaround expert. The reason being, uh, let's assume the fact that you are in a stressful scenario. Let me give you an example. If you remember, like in a few days back, I have given you a call. And said, like, you know, I have gone through a particular scenario where I have a, a very, very... promising client a very prestigious client with me but at the same time the client is acting a little weird in terms of his ignorance or whatever uh, what do you suggest i did ask yeah. you the same question yeah. Yeah. the reason why it sounded that particular question to you is that i am a victim of that particular situation okay okay, okay? yeah so i carry a lot of emotional baggage attached to it yeah, yeah. right yeah. so when you carry a lot of emotional baggage to it you will not be able to sound a very very positive answer to it so it's always advisable to have an external consultant coming to it like coming with a fresh and uh, fresh eye absolutely so a turnaround manager if he's an external guy the advantages are like he will look at the init- the entire problem with a fresh eye yeah. number one second is like he will not he'll be emotionally very neutral yeah. no yeah. he will not yeah. carry that emotional baggage he doesn't need yeah. to be yeah. and third he has he has a lot of experience in turning around such kind of a situation okay And the fourth one is like being uh, the management guys you always can have a shoulder to rely on or yeah. a yeah. sounding board to rely on challenge him yeah. uh, you can do brainstorming exercises and come to some kind of a common consensus okay so it's always advisable to have a turnaround 
consultant being an external guy okay yeah. would you would you agree of this term that a turnaround specialist or a professional and a manager is an activity that an individual comes to an organization that the organization might be in a failing state mm -hmm. then he or she comes from an external entity mm -hmm. with a fresh mind to bring the company back to its feet absolutely you would agree to that term yeah have you seen any organize example of any organizations uh, in Oman who have utilized such a service there are many but uh, one typical factor with Oman is like you know people would love to have a confidentiality done so whenever a turnaround manager you know joins an organization he always tries to have an you know NDA signed a non-disclosure agreement signed with the with the company so uh, fundamentally there are no many stories or no many case studies which has been uh, you know which has been published as such in terms of a turnaround as far as Oman is concerned yeah. okay okay um, I, I, I know for a fact uh, uh, Sam that a number of times when I sit with you the way you look into companies the way you share thoughts about it and I know you've been involved in a number of companies apart from being a consultant you've acted as a, as a, as a CEO uh, in terms of some organizations where you have worked on bringing these companies back to its feet uh, mashallah uh, could you share some of the signs of troubled organizations uh, uh, that you have encountered uh, you've had many assignments absolutely so some yeah. examples yeah, I, I would like to generalize in the first place and yeah. then then get into my kind of an experience uh, there are various reasons for an organization to fail mm -hmm. one could be the inter-organizational issues another would be inactions itself or even the external environment to get a little more intricate if you're talking about what are the signs of an organization failing one um, your sales falling drastically down mm -hmm. your profits could be drastically falling down your uh, operational cost is increasing mm. you have uh, your fixed cost increasing you have a lot of receivables out in the market you have a bad relationship with your lender you have you know leadership and strategic issues mm -hmm. you have uh, poor control system when I say poor control system you know possibly you may have a, a, a business plan to start with but analyzing the business plan and identifying the where the gap is and filling the gap and moving further has been mostly failed by many organizations so poor control system your product itself goes in for a failure or your partnership with uh, your your dealer or a distributor or your principal companies can go in for a toss okay wrong competition analysis uh, from a from a generic perspective you know the best example for that is you know if you look at starbucks i'm sure you know about the story of starbucks as it is in 2000s uh, starbucks was supposed to be uh, one of the largest and the leading food and beverages companies in the world okay Jim, Jim Donald's uh, the CEO of Starbucks okay uh, basically uh, he challenged McDonald's and said guys I'm gonna have 40,000 stores eventually mm -hmm. wherein by 2007 he already established say around 15,000 stores okay okay uh, he didn't care with you know few of the stores maybe thousands of stores were not actually going in profits mm -hmm. What additional he has done is like, you know, Starbucks is known for its coffee. Okay. Instead of coffee, he started diversifying it in terms of like sale of music items, a couple of accessories, and name it. From 2007 onwards, we've seen uh, the downfall of Starbucks as it is. Now, uh, three critical mistakes that Jim Donalds has done over here. A, he failed in understanding his competition, that's McDonald's. Ironically, too, when I'm saying this, ironically, McDonald's is going in for a turnaround at this point of time. Rather, it needs a turnaround. But it failed to understand its competition, that's McDonald's then. Another one is like it deviated from its core product, which is coffee. Okay. And the third one is they went in for a rapid expansion when without understanding the market dynamics and also to ensure that the current stores are not being profitable. This is where Howard Schultz, the, the founder of uh, you know, Starbucks itself, what a fantastic turnaround story. He, he, he got in place of uh, Jim Donalds and you know, took in charge of the entire situation. The first thing that he has done is, though it sounds a little brutal, that's why initially I said like, uh, you know, sometimes people say that the turnaround guys are you know, heartless guys, you know. Okay, what do you mean by heartless guys? Uh, means like they, they are specialized in cost cutting, laying mm. off people and things mm. like that. Yeah. Coming back to Howard Schultz, what he has done is shutting down thousand stores. Fifteen thousand of pe mm. people have been laid off. Mm. But then 
it was the necessity of the hour the need of the hour to bring mm. back the business into mm. shape mm. he bought back the experience of coffee which was what starbucks was always known for mm-hmm. okay and given a different coffee drinking experience to its customers and mm-hmm. in less than a year and a half starbucks got back into its legacy okay okay so technically when you ask me like what are the kind of challenge what are the kind of reasons why an organization fail it could be varied you know either you know for you know poor co- competition analysis diversification plans you may expand if you see that your core business is doing extremely good guys let's expand drastically so you know it should be always the steps by step movement of it so very reasons why an organization uh, could could fail okay yeah. i i i find this to be a very interesting uh, topic uh, needless to mention uh, 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 a profession as well uh, sam and i'm sure many organization would definitely need that many organization will need you sam <laughs> that, that's i'll put it that way tell you one thing i have a company okay an example mm-hmm. i'm going to call my company the change and my and i am thinking of uh, 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 of selling this company okay okay mm-hmm. and we call you guys to come in mm-hmm. and evaluate how would you go about it uh, i know your role is very much to come and turn around to bring it from failing to success but is there is would the town around a professional or manager also look at how to make this business uh a sellable one sellable one okay a uh, good one i'm i'm sure that uh, being the it giant of the country you will be you you will be basically uh, having an it company yeah okay so we'll be doing two different levels of evaluation here one is your macro level of evaluation another one is a micro level of evaluation okay okay and when we come out with a evaluation report for your company go back to investors or we we'll look at the evaluation of whether you need to have a turnaround you need to have a merger acquisitions mm-hmm. or a venture capitalist to come in anyways if you if you really ask me what exactly the step that has been involved mm-hmm. is that when i said the macro level of evaluation let's say an it company mm-hmm. okay what is the correlation of it business within the oman's economic scenario number one okay second is it is a broad terminology by itself okay, okay. now you may be into it services you may be in it products you may be into uh, you know the business application side of it mm-hmm. name it whatever okay okay so what you do is that you know evaluate your it business within the entire sphere of the it it market in oman as it is and the third one we obviously we will go in and evaluate the market the oman market in terms mm-hmm. of its economic scenario mm-hmm. so this is a macro level evaluation okay that's very that's very very interesting that's uh, really really interesting yeah. uh, the, the kind of phase that you will go through we are going to take a quick uh, break right now uh, as there's a lot of interesting thing that i want to go through uh, uh, with you sam uh, today uh, and there's a lot i'm sure who are looking forward to hear as well ladies and gentlemen the number to call in is 2460 2058 the number again is 2460 baby sam is here with me uh, and he is here with you live to answer any questions you have today pertaining to the program Okay, welcome back to Knowledge Talks ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host Tariq Khalal Al Barwani along with our Swedish engineer Mohammed Al Shibli and our guest today is a guru, is a consultant, is a businessman. He is the big boss, uh, baby Sam. Um today we have a special segment to complement with our show. We have a special guest today and who will will who will further uh, throw light on the topic as a business owner who has been benefited by the uh, turnaround strategies and the topic that we had today. We have on call with us is Sheikh Saeed Al Maskiri. He had previously been associated with uh, PDO, Petroleum Development of Oman for more than 8 years in various capacities and is currently the general manager Composite Pipe Industries and the managing director of Intertech, a thorough professional and a proven entrepreneur. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sheikh Saeed Al Maskiri. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu wa barakatuhu. How are you doing Sheikh Said? Alhamdulillah. How about you and how's your guest? Alhamdulillah. My guest is 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 very energetic, very active and is always speaking high of you, mashallah. 
Alhamdulillah. And then Sheikh Said, in fact, we had you are one of the first people I had an interview uh, uh, in Knowledge Talks a bit, a bit of a bit some several months ago. Cool. And there's a lot of learning I've learned from you, and there is a lot of great. Uh, we were supposed to meet here. What's going on? When are we having that meeting? Uh, you, you have not invited me until now. Inshallah, don't, don't worry about it. We'll definitely plan a day and we'll meet up. <laughs> Sheikh <laughs> she, 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 Said, we were talking about turnaround and we understand that your company has had a wonderful turnaround in the past year uh, and also. Could you kindly share your insights, your advices and your experience and elaborate uh, more on this topic? Yes. Actually, uh, the maestro of this turnaround was Barry Sam himself. Okay. Uh, and the story began uh, two years back, uh, where we as a board uh, had a management running one of the companies that we have. Okay. Um, and we had high expectations. However, nevertheless, when the financial uh, results came, we were surprised uh, of huge losses. So basically, okay. we were in a crisis. Okay. Uh, and the management that was running the show, they resigned and uh, left. And we suddenly had an asset the company with huge uh, losses, uh, very high uh, debts to banks uh, and very a lot of angry suppliers. Okay. The first thing we did is that we went to the whiteboard, uh, we identified the, the major issues we have. We uh, listed down the problems into three uh, big issues that need to be solved urgently. Uh, one is speak to the suppliers, two okay. is speak to the financiers, and three, of course, to speak to the employees of the company. For two months, we tried to do it alone. It was successful, but it was very slow. So we thought that we might as well uh, make use of, uh, of someone who is specialized in turnaround uh, strategy, and that is where Sam came in. Okay. He refined the strategy, he came up with, with new ideas, and more importantly, because he was not emotionally attached to the success or failure, i.e. he was someone from outside the organization. He was able to identify a lot of things uh, that helped make the turnaround successful. Okay, mashallah. So Sam came in, and for one year, I can tell you, he was busy not only making strategy, but also implementing it on the ground. Mashallah. And uh, I'm proud to say that today, after two years, uh, the company is, uh, is not only better off but uh, it's even doing much better than what it had did before the crisis mashallah that's that's very very good uh, uh, to hear so you do uh, uh, have uh, faith and belief in turnaround strategies i saw it happen in front of me oh mashallah that's that's really really great to hear now oman being a conservative market how much do you think the businesses would appreciate or even allow for an outsider to get involved and literally poke into their affairs? Uh, and did you personally find it difficult to get an outsider to get as an interim manager? I believe uh, the way I, I would see it based on the discussion we've had that Sam was the interim manager then. Yes. Okay. Actually, I, would, I have to say that I'm lucky okay. uh, because sure. uh, I did not know that uh, this as was existent in the market. I did not know that there were specialized people who, who actually do turn around. Uh, I was lucky because uh, Sam uh, was the friend of one of the board members and he brought him in because he knew what Sam does. Okay, and, and that's so what you... So, going back to your question, I think the market is not conservative. Maybe this is something new to them. What I feel is that uh, consultancies need to speak more about themselves, need to bring up uh, you know shows like these and explain to people that turnaround is, is something healthy. It's something that benefits uh, organizations, not only in the short run, not only to fix, you know, uh, an urgent problem, but actually to to make uh, a thick asset into something very healthy and uh, sustainable. Thank you very, very much, uh, Sheikh Saeed, for sharing valuable feedback and the testimony, in fact, for the, uh, uh, the value that this uh, uh, profession brings to businesses. Barakallahu Thank feek. you, Farah. But, uh, but Sheikh Saeed, don't forget, yes. Latin, sir, we, we have to catch up for a coffee, yeah? Don't mind, it will be on me. I'm waiting for the invitation. <laughs> Barak Allah <laughs> Thank you very much, Saeed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. okay, that was very, very interesting uh, 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 discussion with Sheikh Saeed, a very uh, reputable and renowned personality uh, for Oman, mashallah.
uh, Sam, so that was uh, uh, the turnaround. Management is an interesting uh, uh, profession, as I can see. And you have done a great job, mashallah. Thank you. Thank you, Tariq. Now tell me one thing. You have been recently appointed as the Vice President of Knowledge Oman. How are you going to make some turnaround there? You need to wait and watch Tariq. Okay, that, that's great. So that's it. So January 2015 is coming absolutely, up. Absolutely. You guys absolutely. got uh, one year ahead of you. So we're going to invite you to share your experience of what has been done and the updates. I know the goal was to do an expansion and extension to the great thing that they've done, but we look forward to hear some great things as well, inshallah. It will be my pleasure to share then, Tariq. No doubt. <laughs> okay, now tell me one thing. How should one go about looking for an turn around professional and what are the criteria that one should look for? Well, uh, an organization should fundamentally understand what exactly will be the outcome of, uh, you know, availing the facilities and services of a turnaround manager. Okay. And they also should know, like, whether they can pay the turnaround specialist fee, uh, whether the existing management team can actually, are they ready to willing to work with a particular specialist? And uh, is the company willing to let an outsider liquidate or sell key units of the business if needed? And will they be... Uh, open enough to allow the key uh, the turnaround manager to take key decision making for the organization that's a very very vital factor you know, most of the most of the most of the companies or the most of the business owners uh, sometimes becomes very conservative on such kind of activities but when you select a turnaround uh, manager there are a few uh, key factors which we have to take into consideration one is definitely the ethics and professionalism of of the of the consultant another one is the background of the consultant what is the kind of reputation that he carries and of course, uh, you know, the kind of fee structure that uh, he basically charges the organization. Okay. I think these are a uh, few of the factors that you need to what, consider. What, what is the kind of fee structure that, you, the way, when you said the fee structures, was a little bit of a fee <laughs> structure. Is, is, uh, what, what are we looking at yeah. normally? Well, it depends. It depends on um, the, the, the kind percentage of, of the company profit. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> the kind of engagement. Yeah, of course, we talk about percentages of the company if we are looking at, uh, you know, mergers, acquisitions or, or sell-off. Of course, okay. we work on a percentage basis. Otherwise, uh, it, it is, trust me, we are reasonable. Reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, looking at the uh, uh, steps, what are the steps that are undertaken or the strategy uh, undertaken by the turnaround uh, professional or a manager? Uh, when they get into an organization i would also like you to link this to what we have spoken before the music break mm -hmm. on the micro uh, level uh, i would like you to link it and tell me what are the strategies uh, that are taken to very it. true yeah it's a very valid question like the first one is obviously the evaluation stage of an organization whether it is is this business viable to be turned around is it is a business needed to be turned around and uh, you know, how do you come to such kind of a conclusion? There are different ways of looking at this kind of a conclusion. As I said, like, I have told you about the macro level of evaluations. When it comes to the micro level of evaluation, you basically need to look at the history of the company, this past performance in terms of the financial performance. Okay. Then you basically have to look at what is the asset value of the organization, asset versus your li I mean, liabilities as it is. Yeah. Um, you need to look at what is, the, what is the revenue stream of the organization, what is the cost stream, then when you when you do a real evaluation of itself you also have something like you can use analytical tools if you if you really 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 need it like you okay. know the set score kind of analytical tools mm -hmm. you can do an organizational SWOT analysis okay. so based on which we conclude uh, in the evaluation stage whether the organization is viable to be turned around or do we need to look at selling the organization or do we need to look at you know mergers acquisition or even liquidation okay let's assume that uh, the organization is viable okay. for a turnaround Okay. It, it it also correlates to another factor, which is related to the business owners. Okay. If the business owners have some uh, very strong will to turn around the company, mm -hmm. if they believe that money is not the only factor that is needed to turn around an organization, mm -hmm. and also good work ethics. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm really really emphasizing on the work ethics because mm -hmm. something very very uh, picky on. Okay. Okay. So Why that's are you picky on? You know, work ethics is something very, very important for me to personally work on. So, so mm. that makes a good, good ground for uh, a turnaround consultant to actually, actually step in. Mm -hmm. Then comes the most critical part of it. That is your emergency implementation process. Mm -hmm. When I say that emergency implementation process, your organization is going through a serious crisis. Mm. And the crisis is nothing but your cash, very simpler terms, your cash outflow is more than your cash inflow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is a stage where actually 
I would say that stop the bleed process. Mm. Okay, you basically step in. The outcome should be end of that particular stage is that the cash inflow should be more than your cash outflow. Okay. For which you may have to sell your assets. You may have to close down a couple of your business units. You may have to basically, you know, lay off some people if needed. Mm. Different activities, but end result should be that the cash flow gets stabilized as it is. Okay. Then comes the third stage of it, which is the restructuring stage. Mm -hmm. You may debate me on this point, Tariq, sometime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the debate is like, it should be a people-oriented business to mm -hmm. a process-oriented mm -hmm. business model. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a stage where an organization should move from a people-oriented business to a process-oriented business. Okay? okay. The restructuring happens over here. Mm -hmm. wherein uh, it should be a leadership restructuring, could be a financial restructuring, an operational restructuring, or uh, even a strategic restructuring, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't mean that the leadership restructuring means you have to change the CEO, COOs, and the financial control, mm -hmm. may or may not. Mm -hmm. okay. Give an example, Lee Lokoko, the, the savior of Chrysler, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, he was being sacked from Ford, which Ford, Ford Motors prior, uh, prior to joining Chrysler. Mm -hmm. And Chrysler was in dead, deathbed for at least toys. And, you know, this, this man has actually turned around the entire entity. Mm -hmm. So Ford itself has uh, is kind of regretted the entire action of, you know, firing this gentleman uh, mm -hmm. at some given point of time. What I'm trying to say is that leadership restructuring doesn't actually actually mean that you, know, you should actually change the leaders by itself. Mm -hmm. But of course, the financial restructuring, uh, the process restructuring and your strategic restructuring is a must. Okay. This is where, as I said before, uh, the organization should move from a people-oriented business to a process-driven entity. Okay. Then comes the third level of it, which is your stabilization level. Yeah. That's where the organization slowly get into the profit mode. Okay. 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 And the fourth one is the revitalization stage. This is where the organization grows organically. The holistic development of an organization really happens. Okay. This is where uh, the turnaround manager gives out his baton uh, to the next leader and get out of the you know, uh, entire assignment by itself. Okay. Now I got you. That's why you fired us from the organization we started Knowledge Your Man, right? So you guys can come <laughs> in and do what you guys are doing? Yeah, just jokes aside. You, you can come back as Steve Jobs came back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, now tell me one thing. What is the uh, uh, skill set required for one to be a turnaround manager or a specialist? Now, this is very interesting what you shared today mm -hmm. about turnaround management. And we've also so looked at the definition, the process, the, the strategies. Uh, we looked in a real uh, world organization where Sheikh Saeed have shared. Uh, mashallah, a fantastic thing. Now, I would like to know, someone want to get into this uh, profession or mm -hmm. this career. What is the skill set that is required for someone to be to become a turnaround manager uh, uh, i would say that uh, you know that there are obviously certified pro courses and programs which which are available you can get certified as a turnaround uh, consultant but if you feel that you know over a period of your management journey if you really feel that crisis management is your cup of tea yeah. okay and being working within an organization itself you know if you have developed that kind of an entrepreneurial skill set Mm -hmm. And you have managed crisis pretty well. I think uh, you know you should really look at uh, you know turnaround as as a profession. Yeah. Okay, okay. And what is the advantages of being a turnaround professional? So someone, okay, we already know what is it. We know what are the skill set that's required. What is the advantages it is for someone to become a turnaround uh, professional? Uh, uh, it it should be a passion, Tarek. I mean, you 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 come across with different different kinds of a challenge. Mm -hmm you know irrespective of the industry you know mm -hmm. I, mean, I have worked with IT industry I've been I've been more or less with IT industry as it is mm -hmm. so when I got an assignment with an advertising entity or a, you know a digital media company mm -hmm. to do a turnaround I, I seriously thought it could be a challenge but end of the day um, you know I found it more more easier uh, to, to handle that kind of a situation but the reason being a turnaround is is, is something uh, which if you really feel it as a passion, if mm. you have a sound logical reasoning capacity, if you are emotionally neutral, and if you really believe that you are a man of crisis uh, handler, yes, okay, uh, and you can have fresh challenges every day, what, what more you need? Okay, all right, so that's, that's very, very interesting. Now and it's a well-paid... Um, uh, business as well. Tell me approximately what is it? What is it about? If you don't mind, after the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, um, how do you or how does an organization measure a success and a failure of a 
around management so now we got someone we paid them a lot of mm -hmm. money and mm -hmm. said they need to be paid a lot of money what would you come and say how much uh 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 uh, 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 uh in terms of benefits that yes okay yes uh, good question i mean um, it's just a reversal of your uh, you know business analysis simple okay. as it is when i say that uh, compared to the rest of the management strategies like your change management or quality management uh, the good advantage with turnaround management in terms of identifying the result of the success is simple body books of accounts a balance sheet mm -hmm. which talks for itself uh, the two two stages of turnaround is like a take an organization from a minus to a break even and from a break even to positive okay so you don't need to actually uh, put a lot of qualified uh, you know pointers to, to define that you have been a success but you know there's a lot of quantification to what exactly you have done which is which is your books of accounts has to talk for itself okay yeah okay. so it's quite easy to evaluate and again but if you really wanted to do it scientifically you can again do a z score which mm. which can actually give you an evaluation where your where company is healthy or it's alarming or it's even on the danger zone share more about the z score what what was it it's 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 it's, it's simply a statistical tool mm -hmm. which actually you know if you if you input the current the kind of data that the, the tool uh, tool basically requires in terms of its performance the the, the financial plans uh, the financial performance, your projected financial evaluation for the coming few years. If you input such kind of a data, the, the, the application or the tool itself produces a kind of a result which actually says that your organization is on the healthy knot or it's on an alarming knot. Okay. Anything you wish to share with our audience today, Sam? Uh, three things I, mean, I, I would like to share very quickly. Uh, one being never wait for a situation that an organization should go to a failing scenario mm -hmm. you should the moment you feel that there is something alarming within your business uh, call a doctor yeah. it, it's a sickness it's an organizational sickness and what do you do mm -hmm. exactly when you have sickness is to go avail to the, the services of a doctor yeah. and a turnaround consultant is no one but uh, your company doctor mm -hmm. that that's number one second is like never be ashamed to have the help and services of a turnaround consultant which mm -hmm. i have found uh, with many many uh, many organizations over here that mm -hmm. you know hey why should i have another person i can handle it myself but by then it may be too late okay yeah. okay so 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 that's what it happens so it's yeah. basically saying if something strange in the neighborhood just call sam <laughs> <laughs> Baby Sam, thank you very, very much for joining us today here on Oman Radio FM 90.4 to share about the term and the importance of the turnaround management and the discipline per se. Uh, you have been very, very valuable. Uh, what you shared today is fantastic. I look forward to invite you again in our future uh, episode of the program to come and share with us uh, in-depth uh, uh, strategies that is used and, 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 and different uh, uh, values that you have. I've been having a number of chat with you, Sam, and I've learned a lot. And I don't want to be the only one who's learning. I want everyone at Knowledge Talks to be learning as well. Next time on Knowledge Oman, Tariq, for sure. Inshallah. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you the very best and success in all you do, Inshallah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program for this week. I hope you all had an intriguing time with us. Let us catch up again next week on Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. for a knowledge session. I'm Tariq Hilal Al-Barwani along with us, Sujan Jinia Mohammed Al-Shabibi, wishing you all a happy and a pleasant week. Ma'a salama.